Hola amigos, hola amigas, Dorian here from Hoovalux. Welcome, bienvenido, grosui, salam alaikum. Welcome to the channel, chesh, yakshimash. Howdy y'all and good day. So we have Lucifer who is here and is all clean, washed, bathed and done. I just realized before I started that I'd forgot to take the bumper off. So I'm going to stick it in my bucket and leave that soak um, and I'll put it on in a minute. So I didn't get round to doing the motor yesterday after I finished. It was getting late and uh, we were going out. So um, I thought stuff it, I'll do it tomorrow. So which is today. So his parts are all dry and relatively clean. All the dust has gone out of him. It's a little bit of residual, but I washed it the best I can. I got the parts ready. I have sorted out the brush roll and cleaned that out and greased and oiled the bearings on it. So that is all fine. And I've got a fresh filter for him as well. And his new button and his new undercarriage. So let's start with, first of all, Oh, the other thing I did off, off camera as well, I'd forgotten about, which I didn't realise this had, is the wheels. Now, they were a bugger to get off, but I did manage to get them off, so we'll put them on as well. I cleaned all the scratches off them and the marks, so the caps have got all the paint marks off them, just a bit of scratching, but I'll do some polishing on that. I'll do some polishing on the whole thing, um, so it should come up nice. So, the first thing we have to do is I've let the motor... Uh, the oil soak into it now overnight so and I've sprayed some down into the other bearing as well so that will help so the first thing I need to do is to blast out the dust so let's go over to the air compressor it's all set up and we will do some dust blasting and see what comes out of him okay so I've got the motor and I've got the air compressor gun let's see what's inside Okay, so there we go. That did get out quite a lot of fluff, actually, that's attached to me. So that's a lot better. Right, let's get back on the bench. So I got you up as high as you can, looking down on the bench where you can see all the bits of him. The motor's just been done, so I'm going to wet some cloth. Just wringing him out. Wringing them out really dry as I can. And now I'm going to give the motor a wipe over just to get rid of any surface dust and grime on it. Ok, 
give Lucifer a bit of a clean up, clean up his heart. There we go. Much better. Blast all the dust out of him. And there we go. Let that settle there for a bit. Perfect. Right. Oh, do. Oh, I'll tell you what I need to do. One last thing. I need to wipe this wire going down to the motor. Because that is covered in dust. To. There we go, that's better. So I'm gently just going to start laying out his innards in a rough place. Uh, da, 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 where is, where is, what is, where is it? Oh, that's it. Um, right, I need to put this back on because this is how I put the switch on. So I need to put this back through the way I took it out. And then put the switch back on like so. In. Now the went in like that, and then that went on inside there like that, and that screw. Held that in. There we go. So that's the first screw in. Very good. Uh, now we have got to put these back in. Now minus the. That's my little. the blue wire in this side tightening that up inside the block then I'm putting the brown wire back in inside the block At this point, it doesn't matter if I put the blue at the top or the bottom, as long as I put the mains wire coming in in the same place, it'll be fine. Very basic wiring on this one. Now the mains cable. Let me give the mains cable a good clean. I haven't done that yet. And as you can see, that was manky. The plug is all dusty as well, so I'm just gonna clean the plug. Go back. much better. Now I need to push the wires through the back here. 
through the rubber grommet. And into the corresponding parts of the um, block. Well, that was a stroke of luck, they both went in. Tighten up the screws on the block, electrical block. There we go. Right. <coughs> I'll tell you what I'll do, I'll move you right over so you might be able to see better. So there we go, that'll probably be better for you. So we've got the block in with this part here. I've put the wire through. That's connected up to the block. Just going to make sure that the screws holding this in are all nice and tight. Voila. This wire, so I'm going to follow it down to where it should go in for the motor, which is there. Push it down. And I can see there where it's going to come in. There's a thing down here for holding in the wires there. Now, if you remember, it broke off this plastic bit. So let me pull it off. See if I can. I might have to cut it. Let me use my little snippers. This really is a little monkey. Push it through. Oh, you little bugger. There we go, done. And the one that's remaining, that's perfect, I'm gonna push it down onto there. Use the pliers and push it down. Right, there we go, so that is now holding the wire in place. Then very simply, that will now rest on like so. So I'm going to get my screw board. This is the one that goes in the back of the switch cover. Oh, I'll tell you what I haven't done. I almost forgot. Jeepers. Phew, I almost didn't put this on, which is the um, cable holder. There we go. So that wire won't come out. Try again, put this back over. Where did I put that screw? Oh, there we go. So this is the one that goes in the back. Down here. Now the plastic tube. Can just rest. It doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't serve any purpose because this isn't the one with the bag indicator light, but the tube is in there because of this. Because the tube is there, the hole is there, and if it isn't sealed up with the tube, it's gonna leak dust so or leak air, so it has to go back in even though it doesn't do anything for it. Uh, 
the two front screws go there. It's too long now. Fantastic. So that is now back in place. What I'm going to do now is put the handle back on. Which slides in like that. The bottom back handle is a small screw. flat bladed the top screw is the long one so that is all nice and secure now The next thing we need to do is to put this bag holder back on. Now, the issue with this bag holder is when it's on, there is a big gap around it in there where all the dust collects and eventually will leak dust into the main thing. There's just this big socket. So what I want to do is to kind of seal it up a little bit better. Now a lot of you may not agree with me regarding this but I really like it to be sealed up to prevent the de dust leakage so what I'm going to use is some of my rubber sticky back rubber sealant. I'm roughly going to measure the inside of this I'm going to overcut it put this back this stuff is fantastic I love this stuff put the pin back in it so I'm just going to measure on the inside of this and that will provide quite a good seal on it and stop the dust from escaping just going to push it in like so and I'm looking on the inside and that's providing a much better seal so let me take the sticky back off actually I'm going to cut just a tiny little piece out of it peel back the foam the other end there we go and then put this deep on the inside Push it around. There we go. That will give it a better seal. Because I can see in here, it's touching right around this ring. So the dirt will not collect any more in there. In and around here, 
and escape out. So as I put this on, these back parts go on as well, which are the tool holder. So that is the top bit that goes in there. So I'm going to feckle that into position like so. holding that in while I tighten these screws up perfect and that's held on next I got this second part which goes on which holds the cable into place I'm trying to remember Definitely like that, it's the only way you can go. Like so. Now that will fall out, so I'm gonna be prepped with a screw in the screwdriver held on magnetically. Holding on this back bracket, pushing it through. And then there's one in. Oh, I don't know, I wish I'd stop doing that, because I'll just put it down now. There. And the second one. Tighten them up. Voila! That is now held in the back here and now with a better seal on the inside make sure the fake hose doesn't come out okay so we have done that we've done the top part now we need to concentrate on the motor part I'm doing this step by step I'm trying to remember as I do it make sure I got all the parts for the motor Back door seal here, which I will just push in. The only thing that hasn't dried yet is the um, hose. That takes about three years to dry. Okay, it's a bit of an exaggeration. Two years. Okay. So that's the bag door seal into position. Once the door is on it for a while, it'll um, it'll go back. It'll be fine. But that is all in its place now. Motor time. We have this rubber seal that goes around that side of the motor. And then we have this grommet thing, which goes in that side. Now, there's an arrow here pointing to up. So what I need to do is remember the writing was that way, so. It was at that position inside the motor. So I'm just. Oh, I tell you what, I haven't done. I haven't cleaned off the um, rust on this. Hang on. Ooh, where is it? Where are you, little wire? Hang on. Ugh. Go 
gonna hold the blades. I'm just going to wipe. The rest of this doesn't take very long. There we go. Rust residue off it. Pop that back on, pop that back on. It's going to go in that way. Excellent, leave that there. So I'm just going to position where the motor goes, the fans in the way. Right. This seal. Hang on, remove the fan. It's quite a good idea to put a bit of this on. I'm trying to find out. It's a bit of a jigsaw. It's really important to get this in the right position. So the wire go actually goes underneath it. Just take your time and just work it, work your way around. See where everything is supposed to go. It's quite satisfying, actually. That clips on in there. Now, this is where this plastic tube goes through with it and that goes that does nothing unless no I, I can't even see a pressure release valve on this unless it is just some kind of pressure release I don't know who knows What I do know is it's too long. I'm going to trim it. Now on this side, the motor fits up against this. But on this side, that motor part sticks through. What I need to do now is connect up the electrics. There and there. And start to gently seat the motor into No. Kinks. There we 
go. That is better. Now the rubber seal goes around there. And what I'm going to do is put additional padding on it. Don't have to, it's not necessary. I'm just doing it. On the top of it there. Now just carry on making sure that the rubber seal is in perfect position. That goes over the motor, that goes around there. Just feckle it in to position. And there we go. So you've now got the motor. I did think that this went more in, but it's obviously it doesn't. It goes like that. So everything now is seated in, properly sealed, fits in perfectly. So what I want to do is to test it. Make sure it's off. Da, 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 da. Let's plug it in. It's off at the mains. Okay, let's go. Okay. Perhaps I should have held it on a bit more. <laughs> Great. There's the secret. Because the motor's got some jip to it. It's unplugged, by the way, I have checked it there. I just want to make sure that this seal here is just in. Not quite looking right. There we go. Right, now I can put this on. Da, 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 that's all clean. Yeah, I can definitely put this on there. If you feel like you're trapping something, then there's something not right, but... No. That's in, that's perfect. Four screws here. did it again, didn't I? I put the blooming screws down. Still a bit too long, so what I'm going to do is just get my crosshead screwdriver. Just look for it manually. Oh, 
Okay. Let's plug it back in. <clears throat> and let's try it again. Hmm. The other thing I could have done as well to get the rust off, if I'd have completely forgotten and didn't want to put the whole thing back together, is I could have just done this. That is now lovely and polished, lovely and smooth. So we're working really fine. It seems to have a lot more power. And it does wind down very nicely, so fantastic. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take a break for a minute and then we're gonna be concentrating on the base. So I'm gonna get all the base bits together and start putting the base on it. There's only three screws. It comes to something, there's only three entire screws to put this thing together. And uh, two of them are for the hood. So let me get the bumper cleaned, which is still in the bucket, and we will put this back together. We're back. There's a few things I need to do to this, because this is a brand new chassis. First of all, our wheels. I need to put the wheels back on and there's the washer now I broke one of these off one of the wheels it doesn't make a big issue and then I need to push it in why isn't that going in in there and the washer goes on oh there we go one of the wheels on I'm gonna put some oil down it Better. And the cap. There we go. One wheel. Push this through. Put on the washer. Pop on the next wheel. There we go. Put some oil. And the cap. Ah, come on, get in. Oh, you little monkey. Come on, get in. Ah, oh, there we go, finally. So we've got the two back wheels on. Now I need to fit the rubber bumper, which fits underneath there. Over the top there. Let's 
see the little, there we go, just push it in. Up and over, up and over. And then into its gap. So there we go, we've got the wheels and the bumper back on. Next, the foot pedal. Where are you, foot pedal? It's in a plastic bag, brand new, there we go. A spring in here. And this and I'm wondering if this is what's stopping it. Put a new pedal on. Next, let's put this on. Just going to leave that on like so, the height adjuster. Then we got this little bugger to go on. the screw for it. So that's the height adjuster. So now I have to marry up this with this. fix that problem. Uh, these are identical on either side, so I have to get them up. Down. 
there. There's one. Come on. There we go, there's two. So there we go, Lucifer has now got his stand up. Those brackets are on. Very pleased with that. Very good. It's a shame like on the turbo power where there's like a, a the screw bracket that holds that on. There's nothing. It's literally held on with the hood. So now I have to put this back on. This rubber seal. Back onto there. Follow it around one end, and then it pretty much lets itself in. Like so. Belt and brush roll. Where did I put its belt? Where did I put its belt? Because I took the belt off because... Oh no, actually, no, I need to put a new belt on, that's right, because I do. So let me get my belts out. I'm going to go for a nice original Hoover part. One side. Two sides. Just make sure that that is on. Nice and even. like it's just touching this a bit it's just touching this more than I'd like it to I'm 
Let's have a look. Seems alright. Okay. Let's pop this on. Just felt like something was catching. Fine. Let me just put in the last screw. I've done it again. Gonna tighten it up manually. There we go. Uh, let's put the height adjuster button on. Let's just try it. Excellent, stands up nicely now. Lay it on flat. I have the. Where did I put it? I have a filter here somewhere for it that I've cleaned. Oh, there it is. So I cleaned up the filter on it, it was fine. Pop that inside. Now we're going to put the bag in it. And that's clipped in. I'm going to be preemptive and put. An air freshener in it. Put my wedge in that corner. Put the door on. There we go. Done. Well, almost. So, because I said the other one's been washed, I'm going to use this, which is the um, economy 
uh, thing for it. Hang on a second. Just make sure that I get this screwed in the back right. There we go. I have got a new exhaust filter. There we go, so that is holding on. I'm going to give it a quick demo just here a second. Fantastic, that is working very, very well. I'm just going to try it one more time. And there we go, that is Lucifer, put back together almost. Now before I do anything else, let me just take off this hose at the back, which is proving difficult. Come on, get out you monkey. And here it comes. Hmm. I don't know why that was so hard. There's nothing impeding it. The sponge in here isn't impeding it at all. It's just stiff to get on. Hmm. Okay, anyway, the next thing I have to do is polish it because even though it's in very, very, very good condition, it really needs a polish. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear all this stuff away on the desk, get my polishing stuff out, and we will make Lucifer here shine like the top of the Chrysler building. Hopefully. I'm all set up now to do the machine polishing on uh, him, so what I'm going to do is put you on fast forward, um, so that it'll just speed it up for you. So here is Lucifer, all polished, full of polishing residue. The sponge was eaten alive by its sharp bits. Told you it's very vicious. And what I'm going to do now is to remove the residue. I'm going to use Demon Shine. Now someone said why well, I, I could use some of the um, Auto Finesse, or I can't remember who said it now. I have a memory of a goldfish. Um, but to be honest, I find this perfectly fine and adequate for doing this for quick shine ups and I find it really good for removing the residue so I do have the other stuff but I keep that for the car mainly this is uh, good enough for the machines
So I'm going to now. You may have noticed when I was doing the when I was doing the par polishing, I I went over the letters, but I'd slowed the drill down to very very slow, just to literally just to rub over it very very quickly, so it wouldn't take any of the lettering off. Wow. This looks pretty good, I have to say. I spent a lot of time on the hot on the hood and the wheels. Making sure that I polished it very well. God, this looks better than what it did probably when it came out of the box. <laughs> now I know that George, George from AEG123, he was very eager to see me do this one. Um, I think he has a bit of a soft spot for the pure powers and to be honest, so do I. I quite like them too. They're not amazing vacuum cleaners by any standard, but I don't know, I, I, I've never known anybody who's had one. I've never owned one before. But I do have a soft spot for it. Fantastic. Even the wheels are shiny on it. And I'm going to keep using cloths on this to remove. I discovered recently, I, I thought my washing machine, which is the hot point of Qualtis, didn't have a 90 degree wash. I'd never used it. 60 was the highest that I could see how to get on it. But I did a little bit of fiddling around with the buttons. And yes, you can get a 90 degree wash. So all these rags that you see, um, I'm going to put them on a 90 degree wash uh, demonstration soon. So I quite like washing machines as well. So wow, amazing. Absolutely amazing. It's <laughs> so shiny. Right, let's turn it on its side. I'm just going to spray the side quickly. You wouldn't think that those were the same wheel caps. Incredible. They look like new. I mean, you can still see scuffs and marks on them, but it's amazing. This is where I damaged the um, sponge on these parts here because they were quite sharp. I need to put some oil as well on the um, height wheels. Good. I think next time I go up, I think George will want me to take this up with him, with me, for him to see and have a go of. Right, let's do the back. I'm just going to put that on it there. Quick spray. I don't think these were in America, the Pure Powers. I don't even know if they were in Australia. I don't know. I don't think they were. I wonder which other countries had these machines. Europe, maybe. Oh, sugar cubes. Looks good with the new um, undercarriage. One last side. Turn the fan away. Oh, 
Okie dokie, pig in a pokey. We're almost there. Okay, I'm gonna have to stand it up now. Very, very shiny. Now the one area I want to wax, because I am going to wax it, is the front. And what I've got is some spray wax. Spray wax onto it. And I'm just going to leave this now for a few minutes. And then I'm going to come back with some buffing towels that I use for the car and then just give it one more buff. So I'm just gonna leave it as it is. I know there's marks on it, but I'm just gonna leave it like that. And come back to it in a minute. Okay, my little whippersnappers. I've got some lush, lovely, soft cloths here just to finish off the polishing of Lucifer. It's a 1,500 watt pure power. I'm not sure of the year. I will have to have a look. I know Steve has sent me the list of how to date the vacuum cleaners. I have it here, actually. I printed it out. Uh, oh, that's for Dyson's. That's for Dyson's. I didn't print out the one for Hoover's. Never mind. You'll have a picture of the um, label, you can tell me what it is. Because I've forgotten. Because I'm useless like that for remembering things. Let's recline Lucifer. Let's give him a nice polish. It's nice and the plastic is nice and soft. Though. There we go. Lovely and polished and clean. I'll have to wait for the um, hose to dry completely and then I will put the hose on when I do the full house demo with him. And I'm going to polish the end of the hose as well. So you can see the wheels. I haven't changed the caps on it. It's the same caps, but uh, this part is new, the undercarriage of him. So the rest of him is all original. It's nice that he stands up properly now. Oof, give me my mucky. Got rid of quite a lot of the scratches as well. So there we go. I just need to put some bits on him. We have the extension wand and this long crevice tool. We have the upholstery tool and the dusting brush. I'm going to temporarily use the economy hose. Nuggets in there. There we go. 
go. Pop it in there. And there we go. Done. Put back together. Cleaned and polished within an inch of its life. Air freshener. Height adjuster. New undercarriage. And looking extremely shiny. As you can see under the studio lighting, it looks fantastic. So what we need to do now is get him on the floor and we'll do a little bit of a mess test with it. I'll just put down some of my sawdust and sand and we'll see how it performs. Okay, so I've sprinkled down some sawdust and I've sprinkled down some neon sand uh, just for a quick test to see how it does for picking up the finer particles. So let's move on with the demo. I switched him on. Hang on a second. You can plug him back in. Okay, there we go. Power does work. Right. Try it again. 1,500 watts. Now, 
I can still see sand. There's a bit of sawdust fell out of in there. <coughs> bit of sawdust fell out of it. Uh, I can still see the sand in the carpet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try with one of the tools out the extension wand and let's see if I can do it get rid of it this way I can still I can see bits of sand in the um, in the hose right let's turn him on actually worked to get the sand out of the carpet not so good with the head of the machine so didn't do very good there for a deep deep down it was absolutely no agitation but that's what these pure powers are they're not um, they're not fantastic for um, agitating and getting deep down in the carpet Whew, I'm hot right Let's just do a little bit more vacuuming. Okay, let's get Lucifer up on the bench and finish off the video. Okay, so there we go. There's another pure power rescued from what would have gone to the tip and working very, very well. Let me just unplug it. So the next time you see this now, it will have its hose back on and its proper hose, I mean, and we'll give it a full house demo. I do like the adjustable power ones of these because they're quite handy for when I'm doing, if you're doing dusting, um, then you can um, obviously turn the power down and then use it more for dusting. But it was gonna go to the tip and it was only someone that said, oh, Dory may want this. And so it cost me a bottle of wine that I gave to the lady who owned it. The back of it is a bit warm, not as bad as the 2300 watt variety. Um, so yeah, I'm really pleased with this. It really didn't take that much. It was a lot of surface dirt on it um, to bring it back looking like, well, almost new. As you can see, the reflection on it, it looks fantastic. This, was, this has got the badge of Madge on it. It's got the blanking piece there nothing at all there five stages of filtration or seven stage filtration on this one sorry seven stage filtration and it is the hoover model u3450 serial number 
triple oh six oh oh five oh one oh eight four eight very good the bag on the inside because I've been picking up sawdust now there does appear to be a little bit of fine dust there but the majority oh that actually that I think that that's polishing stuff that's polishing dust from when I was using the polisher I didn't take the bag off to polish it so that is not from the dust but I'll prove that in the demonstration there's this bag and everything I can see I'll just lift that up is inside the bag all the sawdust and all the sand is inside the bag so it did very well smells very nice with the new air freshener as well so I will do a full house demo with this I have a number of these that I have to do for uh, demos with and cleanups so I will get around to it but I've got enough vacuums to keep going for a long time so don't worry about that some water marks on the inside when I was polishing it uh, washing it there we go Right, let's close it up and fantastic there we go so I hope you enjoyed this it was really fun to work on another PO power especially one that was quite simple with the electronics and everything and it has definitely turned out really good can't wait to take some pictures now I'm gonna send some to George and to Rob because I know that they like PO powers uh, so I'd like to thank you very much for watching I hope you found this useful if you have any questions at all please don't hesitate to ask me and I'll see what I can do. Like I said, I'm absolutely no expert. I just tinker around with these machines and I have fun doing it and sharing it with you. So comment, like and subscribe for more videos. There's a huge back catalog now. Uh, so please take a look and see if there's anything there that you fancy and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye y'all.